Hello, I'm Cheryl, and this is Sleep Tight Relax, a calming bedtime podcast for the young and young at heart. In this story, a new white pig comes to the farm, and all the small pigs are curious about her. They run over to see her getting taken out of the crate, but don't talk to her or stay to play with her before running back. After a while, they call to the white pig and then go over to play with her and make friends. Now, before we continue with our story, let's start by making sure you are comfy and relaxed. Let's first take a great big stretch. Doesn't matter if you are in bed, standing, or in a chair. Start with your arms at your side and then slowly swing your arms up from your sides and try to reach as high as you can with your hands and just hold them for a few seconds. Try this again. If you are standing, you can even pretend you are trying to reach the sky. Bring your hands from your sides and slowly stretch as high as you can and hold them for a few seconds and then relax. It feels great to have a big stretch. Now let's try some belly breaths. Breathing in slowly through your nose and slowly out through your mouth. Notice how your belly rises as you fill yourself up with air. Breathe in. And breathe out. Notice how relaxing it feels as you release the breath. Breathe in. and breathe out. One more time. Breathe in. Hold. And breathe out. Great. Let's continue with our story. The Lonely Little Pig One day, the brown hog called to her 12 young pigs and their 10 older brothers and sisters. Look, look, what is in that cage? The 22 stubby snouts that were thrust through the opening of the rail fence were quivering with eagerness and impatience. Their owners wished to know all that was happening, and the old mother's eyes were not so sharp as they had once been. So if the pigs wanted to know the news, they must stop their rooting to find it out. Bits of the soft brown earth clung to their snouts and trembled as they breathed. It looks like a pig, they said, Only it is white. It is a pig then, grunted their mother, as she lay in the shade of an oak tree. There are white pigs, brown pigs, black pigs, and mixtures of brown and black. No matter the color, we are all pigs. Brown is more to my taste, brown or black. Your father was brown and black, and a finer-looking hog I never saw. 
and she buried her eyes in the loose earth. The pigs looked at her and then at each other. They did not often speak of their father. Indeed, the younger ones did not remember him at all. One of the cows said he had such a bad temper that the farmer sent him away to a place where they send bad-tempered pigs. While they were thinking of this and feeling rather sad, the wagon turned into their lane and they could plainly see the pig inside. She was white and quite beautiful in her piggish way. Her ears stood up stiffly. Her snout was as stubby as though it had been broken off. Her eyes were very small, and her tail had the right curl. When she squealed, they could see her sharp teeth. And when she put her feet up on the wooden bars of her rough cage, they noticed the fine hooves of the two big toes of each foot and the two little toes high on the back of her legs, each with its tiny hoof. She was riding in great style, and it is no wonder that the 22 brown pigs with black spots and black feet opened their eyes very wide. They did not know that the farmer brought her in this way because he was in a hurry, and pigs will not move quickly when the farmers want them to. She's coming here, the brown pigs cried. Oh, mother, she's coming here. We're going to see the men take her out of the box. The older hog grunted and staggered to her feet to go with them. But she was big and slow, so that by the time she was fairly standing, they were far down the field and running helter-skelter by the side of the fence. As she stared dully after them, she could see the 22 curly tails bobbing along, and she heard the soft patter of 88 sharp little double hoofs on the earth. She grunted, I am too late to go. Never mind. They will tell me all about it, and I can take a nap. I haven't slept enough today, and I need a rest. Just as the mother hog lay down again, the men lifted the white pig from the wagon, cage and all. So she began to squeal, and she squealed and squealed and squealed and squealed until she was set free in the field with the brown pigs. Nobody had touched her, and she was unhurt. But it was all so strange and new that she thought it would make her feel better to squeal. When she was out of her cage and in the field, she planted her hoofs firmly in the ground, looked squarely at the brown pigs, and grunted a pleasant, good-natured grunt. The brown pigs planted their hoofs in the ground and grunted and stared. They didn't ask her to go rooting with them, and not one of the ten big pigs or the twelve little pigs said, We are glad to see you. There is no telling how long they would have stood there if the horses had not turned the wagon just then. The minute the wheels began to grate on the side of the box, every brown pig whirled around and ran off. The poor little white pig did not know what to make of it. She knew that she had not done anything wrong, She wondered if they didn't mean to speak to her. At first, she thought she would run after them and ask to root with them. But then she remembered something her mother had told her when she was so young that she was pink. It was this. 
When you don't know what to do, go to sleep. So she lay down and took a nap. The brown pigs did not awaken their mother, and when they stopped in the fence corner, one of them said to the big sister, What made you run? Oh, nothing, she said. And why did you run? The little pigs asked their big brother. Because, he answered. After a while, somebody said, Let's go back to where the white pig is. Oh, no, said somebody else. Let's not. She can come over here if she wants to. And it isn't nearly so nice there. You see, they were some not very nice pigs. Perhaps they weren't taught to think of others and be kind. Or maybe for some reason they forgot this important lesson. At last, the white pig opened her round eyes and saw all the brown pigs at the farther end of the field. She said to herself, I must decide what to do before they see that I am awake. She lay there and tried to think of what her mother had told her before she left. If you have nobody to play with, her mother had said, don't stop to think about it and don't act as though you cared. Have a good time by yourself, and you will soon have company. If you cannot enjoy yourself, you must not expect others to enjoy you. That is what I will do, exclaimed the white pig. My mother always gives her children good advice when they go out into the world, and she is right when she says that pigs should have good manners. I'm glad I didn't say anything mean. So the white pig rooted in the sunshine and wallowed in the warm brown earth that she had stirred up with her pink snout. Once in a while, she would run to the fence to watch somebody in the lane, and before she knew it, she was grunting contentedly to herself. Really, she said, I am almost having a good time. I will keep on believing that I would rather do this than anything else. The big sister of the brown pigs looked over to the white pig and said, she's having lots of fun all by herself, it seems to me. Big Brother raised his head. Let's call her over here, he answered. Oh, do, cried the twelve little pigs, wriggling their tails. She looks so full of fun. Call her yourself, said the Big Brother to the Big Sister. Uh, She called. Uh, uh. Don't you want to come over with us, white pig? You can imagine how the white pig felt when she heard this, how her small eyes twinkled and the corners of her mouth turned up more than ever. She called back. I'm having too good a time here to leave my rooting ground. Won't you come over here? Come on, cried all the little pigs to each other. Beat you there. They ate and talked and slept together all afternoon. And when the brown hog called her children home, they and the white pig were the best of friends. Just think, they said to their mother, the white pig let us visit her and she is just as nice as she can be. The white pig in her corner of the pen heard this and smiled to herself. My mother was right, she said. Be polite and kind, happy with yourself as you are, and you will have great friends to play with. And that is the end of our story. Now say after me aloud 
or just to yourself. I am perfect just the way I am. I am a wonderful friend. I am calm, relaxed, and peaceful. Sleep tight. <laughs>